All right, now let's get to drawing some stuff. Taking a look at our original here, um, one of the most basic things we can do is draw an outline shape. And we've got two choices, a circle or a hexagon, like here. That sounds good. The other choices we have available are a thin line or a thick line. And that's enough for now. Let's start there. So. Uh, in keeping with our idea that we want to um, make everything into a nice function, why don't we start uh, here? This is what we're going to be doing. This has been updated. Uh, let's start right under draw and let's create a new function called outline shape. Oh, I forgot to turn off the AC. Hold on. Okay. Function outline shape. Alrighty. So, I think the most basic thing we can do is something we've already done. We can draw an ellipse. Um, well, first we want to do our push-pull, right? Make sure that everything is uh, in this tidy little block here so that it doesn't affect anything else. And we want to translate to wherever we're going. In our case, for now, it's width divided by two, height divided by two. And then we want to do stuff. And the most simple thing we can do is draw an ellipse that is the crystal size by the crystal size, and that will give us the outline that we need, right? Uh, it's gonna be a little hard to see because we're already drawing these test lines. So for now, I'm going to turn off test lines and I'm going to start using our new function outline shape. Now, uh, it's black, that's good. For now, to test, this is a perfect use of our test lines. Let's turn it back on, make sure that it's all the same size. Obviously it should be. It's hard to see because it's underneath there. Why don't we give it um, a stroke width? Well, let's, I'll tell you what, why don't we give our test lines a nice heavy stroke width three. Stroke width is not defined. Uh, oh, it's weight, isn't it? Stroke wait there it is uh, all right well that guess that doesn't really help <laughs> but essentially uh, we can't see them because they're on top of each other um, but uh, we could in the future we'll use these test lines uh, to validate that we've made the right choice um, and we have in this case we've drawn it and it's simple enough to understand I don't know why I'm still talking okay so we've drawn that uh, so what are other things we want to be able to do here obviously we want to um, be able to choose the color of this stroke. So uh, why don't we start up here because we don't have to do it in the push-pop combo. Um, we have something for this already. So let's create a, a variable here and set it to get random from palette. And then um, before, right before we uh, push and pop, we can say stroke is equal to stroke color. Let's see if that works. Yep, blue, blue, pink. Hopefully you can see that in the video. Okay, cool. Well, that sounds good. Um, what else can we do? Uh, we drew the ellipse, good. Let's add random weight and color. Okay, we did the weight, uh, the color, let's do the weight. Um, I've decided between two, um, a one and a three. So let's set a variable and let's use our ternary operator um, and our function get or sorry random select two and whatever comes back from that will either use a one or a three and then we're going to set that here to stroke weight weight now let's see what we get thin thick thin thick thin thick 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 cool so that's working that's excellent. So it doesn't look like much now um, because we're drawing it 500 pixels by 500 pixels, but we draw these smaller uh, difference between one and three will actually look quite good. Um, and we might make those into global variables later, but for now, this is totally fine. Uh, the other thing we want to be able to do is draw a hexagon. So how the heck are we going to do that? Well, my friends, it's a little more complicated uh, than I might like it to be. Um, 
it's using begin shape and end shape. And so I'm just gonna show you how I do it. Um, I'm going to add it here. I'm just gonna copy paste it from another document. I'm gonna call it hexagon. Basically, um, this is how it works. You go to wherever it is you wanna draw and you give it a radius. And it's going to um, find the point on a circle. Remember when I said you didn't have to worry about that? Well, it's not always true. And that means you're, always, you're also gonna need this helper function point on a circle. Um, so if you want to copy that, that's fine. If not, it's in the end code folder for this chapter and you can just copy paste it. Um, I'm not going to go too much into it, but basically this is the formula for finding a point on a circle and I'm going around the circle, finding that point and drawing from it to the one before it. And then I find the next one and draw from it to the one before it and then here and so on. And that's how I create the hexagon. So, uh, if I call hexagon, it's going to call point on circle for me. So basically all I need to do is choose to draw a hexagon using this function. So let's go back into outline shape and add uh, some logic here that will allow us to do that. Um, I just lost my place in my other document here. So let me find that for you. Okay, cool. So we're going to do one other thing here. We're going to use random select two again to determine whether or not we want a hexagon or an ellipse. So we're gonna create a variable called hexagon true, and we're going to use our fancy function random select two. And it's either gonna come back true or false. So for now, that's kinda of all we need to do, is just get a value for this. Is it true or is it false? And once we've come down here to translate, we're either going to draw an ellipse or we're going to draw a hexagon. So we can say if hexagon true then guess what we'll draw a hexagon at zero zero with a radius equal to half of our dimension for a full crystal and if not if it's not true then let's just draw the ellipse like we have been and that's that so let's try it oh that is not working why is that not working? Am I inside of push pop? Yes, I am. Translate with divided by two. If hexagon true. And, ah, it's because I was using, um, I was using radians before. So let's try that. Much better, okay. Troubleshooting on the fly, always fun. So we're getting different shapes with different stroke widths and different colors. This is excellent, exactly what we want from a system. One thing I want to do here though is this point on a circle, hexagon, like these are helper functions that don't really describe the core drawing decisions that we're trying to make. And they're kind of distracting to have in here. So uh, as further refactoring, I'd like to create a new file and I'm gonna call it helpers dot js and just save that at the root of your project and get rid of that go back into here i'm going to take them out save and put them in here so now we just need to make them available to our program so that they know so that they can use them and we do that here by adding it into our index.html we just add the helpers.js file and now those are available. They're, they're all loaded into the browser's memory so that when we call, uh, where is it, hexagon, it will know that it exists. And hexagon will also know that point on circle exists. So if we run this again, we should get no errors and everything looks fine. 